There are many kinds of special needs trusts. There is not just this one thing called a special needs trust. I'll have parents call me all the time, I need a trust. And I'll like, well, what kind of trust? And they're like, oh, I don't know. And that's where an attorney sitting down with you talking about, okay, tell me about your family, tell me about your circumstances, what's in your estate. You get real personal with your estate planning attorney. Your estate planning attorney learns that you know, Johnny has a drug addiction problem, even though nobody else knows about it. Uh, we know that, you know, Caroline has bankruptcy in her past and isn't really good with money. Uh, in a previous life, I was a minister. And I can tell you, people are far more honest with their attorney than they are ever with their minister. Uh, I, I, I get the truth <laughs> as a lawyer. Uh, but determining what type of special needs trust you need for your particular circumstance is where an attorney is supposed to help you. Uh, you may need a combination of these depending on what you're trying to do and what the assets are that we're trying to deal with. If your child received a lawsuit settlement, legally that's their money. So we have to use a self-settled special needs trust to protect that money and keep them eligible for Medicaid. However, you don't want to leave all your money that you're going to leave behind for that child to that trust because that trust has to be used to repay Medicaid. And they don't care where the money came from once it's in that trust. They have the right to recover. You set up a third party settled special needs trust. You can have two, three, four trusts for a child. That's not a problem. Uh, and that way, whatever you leave for that child, you then get to determine what happens to the money when that child no longer needs it. It can go to other children, it can go to your grandchildren, it can go to organizations that you support. You can do with it whatever you want. If you want, you can leave it to Medicaid. They will accept it. I haven't had any families select that option yet. If your child's living in a group home, you're not around anymore, your husband's not around, your wife's not around anymore, the siblings might be living in other states, do you want someone visiting your child to make sure your child's not being abused, not being neglected, that their resources are being used for their benefit? Because I promise you, if you call that group home and ask, how's he doing? So long as he didn't cause any trouble for the staff or other residents, he's doing great. I like to make sure someone's popping in regularly, popping in unannounced, saying, hey, how are things going? And if, you know, one time all heck's breaking loose when they show up, you know, somebody just spilled a gallon of milk all over the floor and there's some, that happens. If it happens every time somebody makes an unannounced visit, yeah, we might have a problem that we need to address. And so I like my trust to provide for a mechanism to do that. If the trustee can do it, great. If friends or family can do it, great. If they can't, then trustee, you need to hire somebody to do it. And we need to make sure there are the resources available to actually do that, to hire somebody.